right, hello everybody, and welcome to Mr. Forbes's calculus class. We are going to be learning our next lesson here in our uh, Unit 7, Techniques and Integrals. The lesson before, we learned how to do partial fraction decomposition. Today, we are going to be learning the same exact thing, but now instead of looking at linear factors, we are going to be considering quadratic factors as well, and how we approach those partial fraction decomposition. So to help us a little bit here, just uh, with some integration uh, that we run across in these problems, remember that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared is 1 over, and this is a typo, I apologize, it should not be the square roots here, 1 over a tan inverse of x over a plus c. So recall that integral is going to help us later on. And I want us to think about this real quick. Okay, and again, I, I, another typo, and I apologize for this. I didn't want you to integrate this example. I wanted to use this example uh, to discuss decomposing um, quadratic bases. Okay, so normally how you would probably think about it now is this is the same thing as 1 over x squared or 1 over x times x. So if I ask you to decompose this, we actually have it as a, a over x plus a over x squared, a repeating linear factor. And if you combine these two together back to a quadratic form, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't have chosen A, that should have been B. If I got a common denominator here, X uh, and, and X, and I got X squared on the denominator, this would end up simplifying to AX plus B over X squared. So this is how we're going to learn to do uh, quadratic decomposition. Because we're not going to sometimes be able to factor that quadratic into two linear components. Sometimes we're going to have to keep it as a quadratic component. And instead of having A on top, instead of having a constant, we're going to have a linear on top. AX plus B. And that's the only difference. Okay. So, um, you see it again, stated right here. If we can't factor the denominator into linear terms, then we're going to have AX plus B on top instead of just a... Um, constant a on top. So let's look at a couple of examples. You'll see it in practice. Okay. Alright, if we look here, we got uh, 4 minus x on top, and we got x times x squared plus b. So like any amount of u sub or any manipulation there would not work. So we're going to have to decompose this fraction. Okay. The factors are x and x squared plus 4. Now that is a linear factor. Okay, we got a linear factor. And we got a quadratic factor. And this quadratic factor cannot be factored into smaller linear components. So we're going to have to adjust our uh, decomposition. Okay. All right. So uh, let's set it up the same way as before. We're going to rewrite the equation 4 minus x over um, x, x squared plus 4. And we can decompose that into its linear factor as a over x. But when I decompose its quadratic factor, you have to make it bx plus c over x squared plus 4. Okay. So there's that decomposition. So anytime you're decomposing it into a quadratic denominator, you need to have bx plus c or cx plus d or ax plus b, whatever the variables you're using are on top. Okay. But then the process from here is the same as yesterday. We just solve it literally the same way. So this should be pretty quick. We want to multiply both sides by the uh, common denominator. So that's going to cross out everything on the left. On the right, it's crossing out the x term. So we have this. And on the uh, right side here, it crosses out the um, x squared term. So I'm left with just an x. Okay. All right, now you can start by doing that let x equals business. Um, it looks like there's only really one x value that's going to cross some stuff out here. What about right here with x? What if I let x equals 0? That might help us. It crosses out that right side, so actually I'm left with 4 on the left, and with the a term I'm left with a times 4, so a equals 1. Okay, but then we run into an issue with b and c. Like, we can't plug in anything else to cross out the rest. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So I think the argument still is like before. We still want to consider x squared terms, maybe some constant terms. Uh, I, I don't know. Whatever's easiest. So we're going to have to think about it. All right. Well, what I'm seeing is maybe x squared is a good place to start with. But let's think about what happens if I consider all my x squared terms. On the left side, there's zero. 
On the right side, we have ax squared. And with the last term, we have to distribute the x. The only x term squared that we have is bx squared. And I think we can solve for that because we know what a is. So this is actually 0 equals a is 1 plus b. So I believe that b is negative 1. All right, but well then that leaves C. So how do we solve for C? Well, okay, we, the x squared term solved for B. And if you look over here where C is at, and the next thing that I would consider is maybe my constants, but it doesn't look to be that C is matched with any constants. It looks like the only thing that C is matched with is going to be an x. So maybe I need to consider my x's as well. So let's consider x. All right, on the, on the left side, it looks like we have negative 1x's. On the, on the second term here, a, we got ax squared plus a times 4. We have actually 0x's there. And on this quantity, we only have a c amount of x's because the other one's bx squared. That makes my life pretty easy here. That just means that negative 1 actually equals c. So we got A, we got B, we got C. So we can rewrite our integral. All right, so we, instead of having the integration of um, A over X, we're going to have the integration of um, 1 over X plus, instead of BX plus C, instead of BX plus C, it's going to be negative 1X. Okay? Instead of plus C, it's going to be minus 1 over X squared plus Four. Yes. Okay. Well, now there's uh, now we can integrate each of these pieces. Now I can integrate this one all day long. The integration of that is ln absolute value of x. But let's for one second consider the integration of negative x minus one over x squared plus four. You can try u sub. It's always a good go-to, but U sub's not going to work. You see, run into an issue. And then you might be thinking, well, maybe I can do, you know, partial fractions again. But the denominator is only one factor. If you only have one factor on the bottom, partial fraction decomposition doesn't work because it's just one fraction. All right, well, there's a little hint here that's going to help you. And I think we've done this maybe once in the past. Let's separate this fraction. Let's separate this fraction as this is one term and this is another term. So, Let's actually make this the ln absolute value of x. Um, this first one would be negative x over x squared plus 4. So let's make that minus the integration of x over x squared plus 4. And the other one would be negative 1 over x squared plus 4. So let's, let's make that minus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. So all I did was just split up the sum of those two fractions. And I should be able to uh, integrate those other two pretty simply. Okay. Um, again, it, for this, this second part here, you want to try u sub. So, like, if you have a difference of power in one, it's going to be natural log. But, but do u sub. And, and I, I'm okay with you doing this, you know, if you need to. But, but u is going to be uh, x squared plus 4. And du is going to be 2x dx. The x dx is going to substitute out. And the one half is going to come out on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of go ahead and tell you the integral. Like, it's going to be one half on the outside, and this is again a common problem or a common integral we're going to run across. One half is going to come out on the other side, and it's the integral of one over u, or the integration of of, of one over x squared plus four, and that's going to be the ln of the absolute value of x squared plus 4. I would like for us to maybe get to a point to where we don't need to do u sub n. There we have it. And then you can see I got minus this other integral, and this is why it made you recall that other integration technique before. Because if I have the integration of 1 over x squared plus a squared, that's tan inverse. That is 1 over a or 1 over 2, tan inverse of x over a or x over 2, and then we have plus C. So 
The only new thing from, uh, from yesterday's lesson to today is uh, how we set up our partial decomposition. And then we're going to have another type of integral in here. It's going to be that, uh, that ln and the tan inverse. Let's try another example. So we've got 18 over a uh, big trinomial here. Not trinomial, but uh, cubic. We see four terms. I hope your mind goes to grouping and taking out a GCF, maybe. This will be plus uh, 9 and x plus 3. And yay, we got the same thing. So this actually factors to x plus 3 as a linear factor and x squared plus 9 as a quadratic factor that cannot be uh, factored any down to uh, any linear. So what I have here is 18 over x minus, oops, sorry, plus 3, um, and x squared plus 9. Then I can break apart into a linear factor, uh, factor a over x plus 3, and a quadratic factor bx plus c over x squared plus 9. And this is going to be a very similar process to the last problem, so I encourage you, uh, pause the video, try it on your own. You have enough time to try it? Okay. <laughs> uh, multiply both sides by the common denominator, so you're left with 18 equals. The uh, x plus 3's cancel, so I'm left with a and x squared plus 9. And the x squared plus 9 factor cancels, so I'm left with bx plus c times x plus 3. All right, now we're going to do the same thing as before. Let, let's start off with anything that we can let x equal to help us out with. And I think the only thing we can do is negative 3 here. Negative 3 will uh, get rid of that whole right side. So we got 18 equals a times negative 3 squared plus 9, or 18. So thankfully, a is a nice, clean number. And then now comes the fun part, having to um, consider our, uh, our individual terms. I always like to start with the highest power. It's usually the, the, the less complicated one to, to uh, look at. Like on the left side, we only have a constant, so we have 0x squared. With this term with a, it looks like we have, are going to have ax squared. And if I were to FOIL this out, it looks like the only x squared term we're going to have is bx squared. So we know a is 1, so this is 0 equals 1 uh, plus b. Again, b is going to equal negative 1. And then what about c? What about c? Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a number of ways to do this, but I, I think, honestly, the best way, like if I look at the constants next, I think that's going to solve for C. I think constants will be the next thing to look at. Because on the left side, we have 18. And on the right side, we're going to have A times 9 as one of our constants. And on this right side, when I FOIL this, the only constant I'm going to have is C times 3. And we know A is 1. So this would be 18 equals 9 plus 3c, or 9 equals 3c, or c equals 3. Okay, so we have, um, we have a, we have b, we have c. Let's go ahead and plug these bad boys in and solve our integrals. So this becomes the integration of, instead of a over x plus 3, that is 1 over x plus 3. Yes, not one. Um, oops. And instead of bx plus c over x squared plus 9, b was uh, negative 1. So I'm going to say plus negative 1x. Um, instead of uh, c, it was 3. So plus 3 over x squared plus 9b. And you're going to notice when you have quadratic, uh, quadratics like this, Whenever I have this factored, and you're always going to split it into two fractions. One's going to be an exponential, and one's going to be, I'm sorry, one's going to be a log, and one's going to be a tan inverse. 
So I know the first integral is ln absolute value of x plus 3. And I can split this other one as the integral of x over x squared plus 9 dx plus the integral of 3 over x squared plus 9 dx. Just split up the fraction. I did last problem. And in fact, I could have went ahead and brought this 3 out and put it, kept it as a 1 right here and made my life a little bit easier. Okay. So we got the ln absolute value of x plus 3. I'm going to kind of do this a little short here because um, if I do u sub for that second one, the x dx goes away, so that's good. And a one half is going to come out with the, uh, with the, with the dx. So I'm going to go ahead and put the one half on the outside. And it's going to be the integration of, again, 1 over u, or ln absolute value of x squared plus 9. And if you need to write out the u sub, do it. We're going to have the, the constant 3 on the outside, and then it's going to be 1 over x squared plus 9, which that integral is um, 1 over a, or 1 over 3, times the tan inverse of x over a, or x over 3, plus c. Now, we're 16 minutes in, and as a little treat, we'll call the video right there. Yeah. Uh, I really only have two more examples with you. Example two and example uh, well, sorry, five, I guess. <laughs> so two more examples, um, because this one's only a setup problem. So I'll only get two more examples, and it is practicing something similar, but a little bit more unique. Okay? So I... Uh, I encourage you to try this on your own, but I encourage you to try to set it up using my notes. In fact, maybe I can set it up for you at least real quick and let you try to solve it on your own. And we could definitely do it together in class. The thing with this one is the difference is that our two factors, x squared and x squared plus 25, are two quadratic factors. So instead of a over any of them, for the x squared term, it's going to be ax plus b over x squared. And for the other quadratic one, it's going to be cx plus d over x squared plus 25. So the thing with this is we're going to have to solve for a, b, c, and d. So it's going to require a little bit of work. That's not terrible. So see if you can do it on your own, see if you can set it up, and we will do this together in class. I can't draw a star. All right, I need to shut up. 18 minutes, you're going to be so excited when you see that time. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.